In this video, you will learn how to find the least common multiple. Now first we need to understand what a multiple means. So here, first we're trying to find the multiples of 3. What that means is we take the number 3 and we multiply it by different integers. So we start with number 1, so 3 times 1, and then that gives me 3. Multiply by 2 to get 6, and then by 3 to get 9, and then 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, etc. So multiples of 3 would be all these numbers here in the box. Okay, 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. If we do the same thing with multiples of 4, 4 times 1 is 4, times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, etc. Those are all multiples of 4 because we're multiplying by numbers to get that new number. Alright, so then we can determine common multiples. We see they both have 12 in common, they both have 24 in common, and that would continue on for infinity. Alright, so those are all common multiples. Now, least common multiple is the smallest multiple they have in common. So the smallest one they have in common would be 12. So the definition of least common multiple is the smallest number that is a multiple of each of the given numbers. So to find the least common multiple, here we have 8 and 10. So we can list multiples like we did in the last slide to find the least common multiple of 8 and 10. So looking at 8, we have 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 24, 32, 40, etc. Those are all multiples of 8. Multiples of 10 would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. So notice the least common multiple, the smallest one they both have in common, would be 40. So therefore, the least common multiple, or LCM, would equal 40. Now, we don't want to have to list all the multiples every time, because that's going to be very tedious, especially when you have um, large numbers. Okay, So we want a quicker way to be able to do this. So the way to do this is we take the 8 and the 10, and we find the prime factorization of each of those. So 8 would be 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, so 8 would be 2 times 2 times 2. 10 can break down just as 2 times 5, and that's it. Alright, so now that we've prime factorized both numbers, what we do from here is we see what factors do we have present. Well, we have 2's and 5's. So to find the least common multiple, I take all the 2's from the number that has the most. So looking at the 2's, 8 has the most, and it has 3 of them. So I take all of those 2's from the 8. And then we do the same thing with the other factor, which was 5. We take all the 5's from the one that has the most. Well, the only one with 5's is 10. 10 has the most with one of them. So we take that 5 as well multiply those numbers together, and we find our LCM to be 40. Notice that is the correct answer, because that is the same thing we got when we listed them out up here. All right, here's another example where we are going to calculate by using the prime factorization method. So 4, 6, and 15. 4 can break down as 2 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, and 15 is 3 times 5. So to find the least common multiple of all three of these, I see what factors are present. So we have 2s, 3s, and 5s. So we're looking at the 2s, take all the 2s from the one that has the most of them. Well, 4 has the most 2s, and it has 2 of them, so we take all of those 2s. So we have 2 times 2. Do the same thing with the 3's. See which one has the most. Well, it's a tie. 6 and 15 both have 1. So it doesn't matter which one we take, but the most is 1. So we take 1, 3. And then with the 5's, 
we see that 15 has the most fives with one of them. So we take all the fives, which is just the one. So we have now two uh, times two times three times the five. Multiply those together and my answer is going to be 60. And we can confirm that if we wanted to by listing all the multiples out of four, six, and 15, and would find that that is the smallest one that they have in common. One more example where now we throw in variables. So we have 12x squared y and 14x cubed y. Well, the 12 can break down as four times three, and four is two times two. So 12, we have two times two times three, and then we have two x's, and then we have a y. 14 is two times seven, so we have two times seven times three x's times y. So to find the LCM, the least common multiple, I determine which factors do we have present. Well, we have twos, threes, sevens, x's, and y's. So I look at each of these factors and determine which one has the most, and then put it all together. So looking at the twos, which one has the most? Well, that's going to be the 12. The 12 has the most. It has two twos. So we take both of those twos, and then we look at the threes. Which one has the most threes? Well, the 12 has the most with one, so we take that one three and put it here. All right, next we look at the sevens. So which one has the most sevens? Well, that's the 14. The 14 has one seven. So we take that one seven and put it with the other numbers. Looking at x's. Which one has the most x's? Well, the 14 has more, it has three of them. So we take all three of those x's. And then y's is a tie, they both have one. It doesn't matter which one we take, we're just taking one. So we take one y, and then we put everything together. Two times two times three times seven would be 84 times x to the third times y. So that is my least common multiple in this example. So with the variables, nothing changes. It's still the same process as with just numbers.